Hi and welcome to another video update from the Fire Brigade Union here at the Union's Head Office in London. We're joined by General Secretary Matt Rack to discuss the latest developments on the issue of firefighter pay. Now Matt, we discussed this last week and we discussed an offer that's been made by the employers. An offer which you described previously as complex. Can you just recap for everyone watching this on the areas of complexity? Yeah, Tom, the employers want to continue the discussions around these work streams and particularly around EMR trials, MTFA and so on. And their offer was uh, an initial 2% uh, linked to the continuation of the trials while those discussions continue. So that's point one. Then that there should be a uh, further 3% subject to agreement on those discussions. Uh, and then that there should be a pay deal for 2018 and 2019 and potentially 2020. So there were uh, provisional uh, elements for the employer's side and also provisional elements for our side. Uh, and if neither side could reach agreement to that point, it would simply be the 2%. So that, that was, it, that was the, the basis of that uh, proposal from the employers. Okay, Matt. Now that offer's gone out for a consultation with the wider membership and you've just recently announced the results of that consultation, writing to all members saying that the offer is inadequate in its current form. Why do you say that? I think the discussion of the executive was that uh, there were lots of concerns about it that, that from a range of, of, of a group of some members who wanted to accept that uh, deal to some people who were more sceptical to some people who were very, very much opposed to it. So there were a range of views reported back uh, around the table and that's important for people to uh, bear in mind. Uh, but in particular that the the reliance of, of the, the second and third and fourth stages on government funding and the uh, unknown elements of what would be the, the 2018, 2019, 2020 pay rises uh, and what would be precisely what was required in terms of any changes in roll maps and so on, those were the areas where people were particularly concerned. Okay, Matt, now you've referred to how central the issue of the ongoing NJC trials, especially EMR trials, mm. are to this. What impact will the union's decision now have on these trials? Well, we've written to the employers saying that we intend to, that there is no ex agreement to extend those trials and that therefore those trials would end from the 24th of August. Uh, indeed, the employers have just written back, uh, raising their concerns about that, uh, seeking uh, further discussions um, and suggesting that in the absence of that, their, their offer would, would be a 1% offer. So that's something we're going to have to uh, meet, discuss and consider. Um, but currently, our notice to them is that those trials would end on the 24th of August. OK, Matt, so we've had the union's decision and indeed the employer's response. What everyone will want to know out there is, what's the next steps for us in regard to this process? Well, as I say, it's complex. Uh, it's complex in terms of the offer. It's also complex in terms of what we do uh, next. Uh, so I think the Executive Council will have to consider this. Members will have to consider this. Uh, there is no easy answer. We know that elsewhere in the public sector people are still having 1% pay deals imposed on them, most recently in, uh, among the teachers. Uh, there is discussion that the government will ease upon the public sector pay freeze, uh, but we've seen no sign of that as yet. Uh, and we've got to find a way of uh, forcing the government to uh, lift that cap, but also provide the money so that employers in our service, but across the public services, can pay that, uh, can pay those increases. We're raising that at the TUC. It'll be a source of a big debate in September at the Trades Union Congress this year. There will be lobbies and protests in the autumn that the TUC has started to discuss already. We'll be part of that. So we want to build a big movement to force the government back on the question of pay. But we've also got to think about what we specifically do in the fire and rescue service as well to try and get a pay increase for firefighters. And just finally, Matt, what can the firefighters and the emergency fire control staff who are watching that, what role can they play throughout this process? I think the most important thing that people can do is is follow the information closely and discuss it in the workplace to discuss it with their workmates make sure that every view is heard not just the views of trade union reps but the views of all members need to be heard in this uh, and let your reps know let your brigade committee know what your views are so that we can have an informed debate on the executive council about what our next steps are 
Thanks very much, Matt. For our information on this and indeed every other um, issue that we're dealing with, you can go to our website, and that's www.fbu.org.uk. But you can also get more immediate updates on our Twitter feed, and that's at FBU National. Until the next time, thanks very much, and thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt.